Hello everyone and welcome to AGCAT's webinar New Power for CLT Design Automation in Revit. My name is Eve and I'm a BIM application engineer at AGCAT. I have a bachelor's degree in architecture and worked for several years in that field. My work today is related to the wood framing solutions. Here at AGCAD, we create applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs of world's leading BIM practitioners. We eliminate tasks that do not create value. We've developed the widest range of TrueBIM software in the world for Revit professionals covering wooden metal framing, precast concrete design, and MEP system design. Today I'm going to talk about our BIM solution called Wood Framing CLT. It's for creating cross-laminated timber floor, roof slabs, and wall panels of any shape or complexity. So in this webinar, you'll see how to use predefined configurations to create CLT panels by your own created rules, distribute complex connections, save time with identical procedures that have to be repeated, automatically update the model, automate shop drawings, and cut lists. Moreover, the user interface of our wood framing CLT software is going to be enhanced in a couple of weeks. The commands will be collected to a single ribbon, enhanced and rearranged by the workflow to maximize the ease of user interface. And during this webinar, you'll see the enhanced interface uh, that will be available for a free trial very soon. So as you can see from this image previously, we had to use functionality from separate tools like wall plus, floor plus, roof plus, smart connections, and so on. Whereas now, all needed functionality is available from a single ribbon conveniently arranged by the recommended workflow. So you will be able to open multiple windows, frame, elements, and document their floating windows, and you will be also able to minimize them to save working space. Okay, and after this webinar or doing it, we'll end up with a CLT project with complex connections distributed and also shop drawings generated automatically. So now let's jump right in to the live demonstration. And here you can see I already have a project opened and this is the new CLT software. So previously, as you mentioned, we had to use all of these separate tools in order to create uh, the structure for the roofs, for the walls, and for the floors, whereas now we need to use only one tool for all parts of the building to frame it, to distribute connections, to create shop drawings, and so on. And I will show you right now a very quick workflow so you could see how fast the software is once you already have the rules. So the software already comes together with a set of sample families that I'm going to use and a set of sample configurations. So have in mind that if you will decide to download a trial, you will have everything that I'm going to show you right now and you will be able to repeat my steps. So right here, what you can see is just a simple Revit wall right? And it's empty for now. It doesn't have any CLD panels. And in Revit, I would waste a lot of time creating them manually. But with our software, I can create them automatically by my own created rules. And in this case, as I mentioned, I'm going to use the sample rules. So these are the free floating windows to create the frame, to distribute connections, and finally, to create documentation. So with this tool right now, I can just select all of my walls and floors that I have in this project. Oh, and sorry, before that, I want to number them. I want to number all of the walls, floors, and roofs in my project. And just in one click, the tool numbered all elements. So now if I would select any wall, you can see that it has a mark parameter value. So this wall is in level number one, it's an exterior wall, number three, and this wall, let's say, is interior wall number six in level number one. And you can, of course, change these rules. So now that everything is numbered, I will select all of the parts and click on create frame. And that's it. Now the tool will automatically create CLT panels for all of the walls and the floor that I just selected. And you can see that that's it. The panels were created. So they are created as Revit's part category and you can see all of the connections between them. So in this case, I have this board that connects the panels and also I have a division profile between the parts so you can see 
that everything is split and the same thing goes for, for the walls. And the openings are also split by a couple of different rules. So for the smallest opening, I don't want to split parts around it. For the larger opening, I want to have a part, a CLT panel below and above the opening. For this one, I want to have a panel only above it and so on. So you can create all of these different rules based on your opening type or based on its size, however you need to. Okay, and now once I've created the CLT panels, I would also like to create connections between them. So again, it's just one click. I already have my sample configurations. So I will just select all of the parts and you can see that the name of the connection configuration is filled in automatically because I chose to do so. So now I only have to click auto insert and that's it. The tool knows which configuration I want to use and it will use it automatically. It will now find all of the connections that I predefined and I predefined L and T connections and that's it. It just distributed all of these connections based on the rules. So you can see that these dovetail connections were distributed whenever the parts are connecting in an L connection or in a T connection. And that's it, it was just one click. So actually now I can also, uh, let's say, isolate this part. So you could see how accurate it is. Panels can even be exported to CNC machines. Okay, and now that I've automatically insert all of the connections, I just need to number the elements and create the shop drawings. So I will also write in a couple of parameter values manually because sometimes that is something what we need to do uh, while creating CLT structures, for example, the visual quality. I can decide what I want to write in here. So let's say I'll write in interior V, exterior V, and I will write in the unit number of this part and the green direction. I can choose whether I want to have vertical or horizontal green direction. So now that I've filled in these parameter values, I just want to number my elements so that the parts would get a mark parameter value and it will be cr created out of the unit number and the part level that is now being calculated automatically. And it's done for all of my elements in the project, so we need to use this functionality for numbering only one time. And now that I will select the part, you can see uh, that it has a mark value and it's composed out of unit number and part level. So this part is in level number one and it's part number one. That is how it's doing it. But of course, you can create your own rules. So also you can see that this part knows in which wall is, is located, what is the mark, uh, the volume, the area, the length, height, thickness, and all of that is calculated. And now I can insert the tags automatically. So I can just select all of the parts that I need and insert tags. And you'll see 3D tags added based on a sample configuration that again you will be able to use as well if you will download a free trial. And here you can see that the values that I wrote in previously for the visual quality appear in the free view. And of course you can hide these tags in the free view if you don't need them but they look really nice in the shop drawings. So that's it basically I can just select this part and use create assembly. For the wall panel, we have another configuration for the floor or for the roof. And that's it. Now you will see that all of the shop drawings and schedules will be generated automatically. So now this is an assembly of this panel. And now in the project browser under assemblies, I can see that it's created. And let's take a look what was just generated automatically. So I will now minimize these windows so you could see that. I can save a working space like this and here you can see the 3D view of the panel, also the elevation top view. These are the tags, you can see that they look pretty nice for the visual quality. All of the dimensions are added automatically. Also I have the schedule where I can see the mark of the part, thickness, length and whatever you need actually you can modify these schedules. And then the elevation front view, so here you can see that again all of the dimensions are added automatically and the dimensions are even moved automatically so that they wouldn't overlap 
And the tag, you can see it's it has a horizontal direction because for this part I said that the green direction is horizontal. And finally we have a section view. So basically that's it. Now I just have to um, create this layout on my sheet and then later I can set this sheet as a template so I need to create this layout only one time. And add a schedule. And that's it. You can see how fast the tool is once I already have the rules and they need to be created only one time. From there, that's it. You can just use them in the future. Okay, and now once you saw the whole workflow from start to finish, I will show you everything again using a different example uh, and maybe show you some more features, how we can modify the frames, how we can automatically update them. Uh, and have in mind that my purpose right now is to demonstrate the possibilities. Uh, but the tool comes together uh, with training sessions, so we would go into more detail during those. Okay, and this time again, I'm using a different configuration this time. So if I would select this wall, Again, just with some more details, you can see that it has one layer in Revit. And now, with our tool, I can click on Link Type, and you'll see the same wall structure. I can map a configuration that I want to use. So previously, I used this configuration with the board, but now I will use a configuration with a half lap. So I will frame this wall, these walls, and also I will split the parts for them to create the CLT panels. And you can see that. Each wall type can have a different rule applied, and you can have as many rules as you need. These are the sample ones, so you will be able to use them as well. And now, once the configuration is mapped, I can again just select all of the walls, and also I will select the floor and create the frame. And that's it. Now the tool will frame these elements based on a different configuration. So now instead of having the connection with the board, I will have a connection with a half lap. So I just want you to understand that the possibilities are very wide, so it all depends on the connections that you need. Basically, we need to create a family for a certain connection type, and then that's it. The main thing is that with our software, elements are automatically distributed in one click. So this is just a sample library and it can be expanded based on each user's needs. Okay, and that's it again. So you can see in this example that I have a half lap connection for the walls and for the floors as well. And this time the walls are overlapping a little bit in the connections. You can see that in the L connection and in the T connection, they intersect. And that's fine, that is what I predefined in the configuration, and later you will see why. We will create connections between these T and L uh, panels as well. Uh, so now, once I've created the frame, of course, just like before, I could just go ahead, insert connections, the number elements, and create the shop drawings. But let's say that sometimes I need to modify the frames after they are created. And there are a lot of ways how we can modify them, and today I'm going to show you a few of them so that you would understand the possibilities. Because it's impossible to show you each and every situation, they all depend on your needs. So, first of all, Let's say that the architectural model changed and maybe the opening was moved or another opening was added or the wall became longer or shorter and the frame is no longer correct based on our model. Anytime we can use update frame, select any element from the frame and that's it. The frame will be updated, the panels will be updated based on our changes. And you can see that it was updated, it's correct again. And also, uh, we can modify instances of our configurations. So let's say that for some reason, this is a special situation where I need the CLD panel above this certain opening to be larger. But all other openings are fine. In that case, of course, I don't want to change my configuration because this change needs to be applied only for this single opening. And in that case, I can modify the opening. And in this manner, I can actually modify the frame or the connection or anything like that. So I will modify the opening and now I can change the whole configuration for the opening or only one small thing 
from this configuration. So you can see that right now this is the part above the opening overlap and I will increase it to let's say 300 so you would see the difference. Click on OK and that's it. Now you'll see that it was modified, right? But I just need to split the parts again so that they would be updated. And that's it. That is how easy it is. And in this manner, we can modify the frame or the floor or the roof, anything. And now uh, let's think of another example. So let's say that we need to move a split in a certain location. Maybe we want to move a split for the wall or for the floor. And these splits are actually created out of structural framing elements that split the parts so we can move them. Now I will uh, show you one thing. Uh, I will quickly show the original view so that we couldn't see the parts anymore. And the parts are our CLD panels. And you can see these lines. So these lines are the elements that split our panels and we can distribute them how we like. So these elements have split part parameters, split part priority, and they split the part. And I will modify my view template once again so that uh, we could see the parts show both. Okay, you can see that they split our parts. And let's say I want to move this split a little bit. So I will open the edit elements window and I will move this step and I will move it uh, let's say by half a meter okay and that's it uh, you will see that it will be moved yes so now the split was moved and this is the result okay and another situation let's say that uh, these floor parts floor panels they are too long and I want to split them and I also have this wall on the lower level and let's say that the wall in the lower level in the exact same location, it needs to support these panels and I want to split them in the exact same location as that wall. We don't have to calculate that location when we have our tool because it can calculate that automatically. So I will open uh, another window in which I can add additional elements and I will add an additional bridging, nogging or blocking. Let's say as an example between these three parts. So I'll select this element and this element from my floor. And now I will say which element type do I want to use. And also, you see, I can enter the position, but I can also select a line based element. So now I will select this wall and the tool calculated the offset automatically. Right? So now I just click on OK. And also, I just want to update them right now the parts for this floor and that's it. So you can see that we have these large parts everywhere but where I added that additional element they are split and the location was calculated automatically. So you can see that the possibilities to modify the model after we create it by the configurations are very wide. Okay, and now let's say that I created the frame, I modified it, and I reached the result. Now I can continue. So again, I can just select all of the parts from these walls. And now these parts have a different configuration, L and T connections instead of dovetails. So I can just use auto insert. The tool will understand which configuration I want to use so I don't have to think and choose. And it is inserting 37 elements and that's it. So you can see now that previously these parts were overlapping but now I have these void structural connection elements distributed that create those cutouts and so I have this L connection and it even works for walls that are different heights. So this wall is higher you can see this is lower and I have that half lap connection and also this is what I have for the T connection. Okay and now also I will I will isolate let's see this higher part with the T connection and this part with an L connection and again I will isolate them really quickly so you could see how the connections are created.
Yeah, again, so it's really accurate. We can export it to CNC machines. Okay, and now once the connections were inserted, again, we can do the same thing. We can fill in the parameter values for our parts and create the shop drawings. So I'm going to write in the values for the visual quality. Uh, this time the unit number will let's say be uh, unit number two, because this is a different building. Uh, we can use this for that. And then the green direction. So for one of these parts, I will say that the direction is vertical and for another one it will be horizontal so you will see the difference between the tags. And now that I've filled in these values I will just number the elements. Okay and I think that's it. So now again you can see that we have mark, it can see the host, all of these parameters are here. And now let's create the shop drawings but before that I will also add uh, the tags for these parts. So again I'm using the sample configuration that comes together with the software. Once I click on insert tags, the tags are added automatically by this configuration and you can create your own rules. Okay and again the visual quality, the values that I wrote in are, are visible right here. So now I can select this part and I will create the assembly for it. So all of the views and schedules will be generated automatically, but this time I will show you another thing. So this is the part that I've created an assembly for. So again, the 3D view, uh, the elevation, top view with dimensions added automatically, also uh, the schedule with all needed information, the elevation front view, you can see the green direction is horizontal, for this part, all of the cuts are dimensioned, the connection is visible right here, and I will create a layout on the sheet. So remember I told you that we need to create this layout only one time and all other sheets uh, will be generated automatically for us. So that is what I'm going to show you uh, right now. I will maybe move this a little bit further and like this. Right, so I've created this template and now I will go to Assemblies, Configuration and I will say that I want to use this sheet for the part in unit number two as a template sheet for the future. So that means that now whenever I will create a shop drawing for a part that uses the same configuration, the sheet will be generated automatically as well, not only the drawings and schedules. That's it. Okay, so let's take a look. This is an assembly for, okay, let's take a look at the name, for part number 502, because it's in level number 5. And you can see that previously for this part we created the sheet manually, and now for the part with the T connection, the sheet is generated automatically and the views are placed in the exact same locations. And also for that previous part, remember we had a horizontal green direction. So the tag shows us horizontal arrows and this time I've created a panel with a vertical green direction. And in these tags also you can see the mark value of the part and the visual quality of the exterior and interior side. Okay, so you saw already a couple of examples how we can quickly uh, create the project from start to finish. And now I just want to show you a couple of more interesting examples as well. So this is right now a wall that has multiple layers. So let's take a look at the type. You can see that I have the structure layer for my CLT layer, but I also have some more additional layers for the sheeting, let's say, nailers or sidings, anything that I might need. And now when I click the link type of this wall, you can see the structure and I can also map different types of layers and configurations. And again, they're all a part of the software, so you would have them as well. You would be able to test them out with all of the families and rules predefined. You can also duplicate them, modify them, and create your own. This time, as an example, I also added sheeting, nailers, 
vertical and horizontal and siding. So let's take a look how that works. First of all, I will again select the wall and create the frame. And the tool will split the parts to create the CLD panels and also the sheeting layer this time because I predefined uh, the sheeting layer. Okay, and that's it. And this time I also have parts for the sheeting. So again, you can modify the configuration for the sheeting or any other layer. These are just sample rules. Okay, and now that we have the CLT panels and the sheeting, we can add other layers. So I'll select this wall again and use Add Nailers. Oh, and by the way, please ignore these tooltips. We're still working on them uh, because the software will be released in a couple of weeks. That's it. You can see the result. So I have vertical and horizontal nailers. And this can be anything. You can also add metal elements with the metal framing software. Okay, so now only the siding layer is left. So I will again select the wall and add the finishing layer. Okay, and that's the result. You can see the siding is distributed. I have nailers, sidings, I have sheetings. And now I can also add uh, more connections to show you a couple of more examples because I think that they are pretty interesting. So let's say that if you have electrical fixtures on your panels and you want to create cuts in the CLT panels, uh, we have a sample configuration for that as well. So I can select this part and use insert elements and now I can choose the configuration that I want to use. So for this example I want to use a group for the wall part and a configuration for the conduit cuts. That's it. You can see that I have those cuts and of course a different rule can be created for them. And now another example with the metal connections. So we can also distribute nails, angles, hold downs, anything that you would need. So I will now again insert elements on these parts and I will choose a configuration with the metal angles. And you can see that the metal elements were distributed. So again, look at this as an example, any type of connection can be added. Okay, and now let's see another example with the floor opening. So right here I have a floor with an opening and I will create a frame for it. And again, for the floors, it's the same thing. We create a link for the floor, we map the configuration. In this case, I use the configuration with a half lap. And let's say that above the opening, I want to have uh, a single part aligned with the opening's edges. Uh, again, I can modify the frame this time. I mean modify the opening. So I will use Modify Opening, select any element from the frame, and I will add an element uh, for the header. Also, I will add an element for the sill, and I will add top cribble trimmers. Okay? And you will see that the elements were added. Right? This is the element, but we need to split the parts again. So I will update the parts and that's it. I just modified this frame. Another example with two floors. So I will frame both of these floors. I will create the CLT panels for them. And again, in this example, I am using the configuration with a half lap. And you can see that the half laps are created whenever the panels are in the same floor and they're in the same direction. But for this floor, the panels, they're going in a different direction than in this floor. And let's say that I want to have the half lap created between the panels in different floors. And I can do that as well uh, using commands from the elements menu. So first of all, I want to modify these parts. I want to extend them. So I would have a similar result uh, to when I remember extended the wall parts to create the L and T connections. So I'll do the same thing here. Instead of applying it to the configuration, I will modify the parts because uh, 
in this in this case that is what I want to do I don't want them to be modified for all of my flowers and I will add an extension for all of these parts yeah and you can see now that they are extending into this part and now that they are extending I will select all of these parts and I will insert elements I will insert cuts for the top of the panels so I will choose a half lap cut for the top of the panel insert details and that's it you can see now that I have this cut but I don't have a cut for this part so I will add it as well I will insert elements again and I will choose a different rule for the left side of the panel cut and the cut will be added to the bottom that's it so now I have this cut created for you to see better I will isolate these two elements yeah and you can see what kind of connections can we create okay and another example so you can see here that again I have this floor but this time uh, the beam is going throughout the floor and let's say that I want my CLD panels to be supported by this beam so they need to be split automatically and maybe a certain cut needs to be created so first of all I will create the CLD panels and now I will insert a cut element into this beam so that the element would cut the parts later so again we have a sample rule for that I will insert elements and this is a hub cut configuration and you can see now that the cut was added but it also cuts the beam don't worry about that it will be fixed very soon so I will open the additional elements menu and I will select both of these elements so the cut and the beam and I will use add external element command and also select any element from the frame so now you will see that the beam will be uncut again yes yeah, so the beam is back and also now I just want to update the parts so I will split the parts again and now let's take a look the parts were split by the beam and also they were cut around it so I can also cut the wall part so I'll select the cut and the wall part okay let's try that again yeah the cut is created you can see and again I can isolate one of these parts so you could see better maybe this one isolate element and you can see that this is a cut that was that was created Okay, I will reset the view and also open another one. Yeah, you can see how the parts are cut around the beam and the wall part as well. Okay, and another example with the roofs. So you could see that we can do the same thing for the roofs as well. And with our software, it's impossible to frame the roofs that are multi-sided right you can see that this roof has uh, three four five slopes so before framing it we have to split the roof we can do that of course automatically with the software uh, but before uh, splitting the roof I have actually moved these main roofs to a different face so that later I wouldn't have a bunch of roofs in the same place so it just helps me to keep my project tidy so what I will do is I will use split roof and select this roof and you can see that a separate roof was created for each slope and now I will be able to create panels for those roofs and I will do the same thing for this roof as well right and again the same thing and I will go to another view where that phase is hidden 
So here my roofs are not duplicated. And now again, the same thing, the configurations are sample ones. They are already mapped uh, for this roof type. So I can just select all of them and click on create frame. So one of these roofs will be framed with the BART connections and another one will be framed with half lap connections. And that's it. This roof has a half lap connection. This roof has a BART connection. And now also you can see different types of ridges. So for this roof, the ridge connects in, I would say, it, it, it's basically metered, right? Like this. But for this roof, let's say I wanted to have a 90 degrees panel. So my ridge looks like this. So again, it, it depends on you, how you want to create it. And now we can take a look at a couple of more different ridges. So in this case, you can see uh, that I've added a structural framing element for the ridge. And again, I will isolate this element and you can see that these are added on the bottom as well. So you can add any type of element, of course, and I will isolate it. So you can see that the cuts are performed. Okay. And I will now reset the temporary isolate mode. And you can see another example with the roof that is not mirrored, that connects like this. So it all depends on your needs. And the final one is when the walls are connecting to the roofs. So you can see that this is one type of connection and this is another type of connection. Okay, and I think that's all that I wanted to show you in this live uh, demonstration. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and saw uh, how wood framing CLT greatly reduces the time spent on manual tasks, human errors, and also optimizes your work. So now I would like to encourage you to download a free trial once it will be available. So previously, our CLT software was quite difficult to use and users had to purchase a training session together with it because it was uh, very, very hard to understand how to use it uh, without a training session. And now I'm very glad that we finally enhanced the user interface of our wood framing CLT solution so that everyone could download a free trial and use it free for 14 days to make sure that it fits their needs. And the free trial of the software, as I mentioned, will be available in a couple of weeks. So now if you would visit our webpage and go to products and wood framing CLT, uh, you will see uh, that the trial is not available at this moment because we're still working with the software to, you know, uh, make the final steps. To complete it. Uh, but once it's finished, you should get an automated email so you'll know uh, when you can finally try this software for free. And also, let us know if you would like a personal online demonstration because that is also uh, possible. We would answer all of your questions that you would have during that uh, online demonstration. And the software also, of course, comes together with uh, training sessions. So we would help you, we would teach you how to use it, how to create your own elements for connections, and so on. Uh, so now, don't run away those of you who had questions. I will answer them shortly. Uh, but those of you who don't have any more questions, thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope that you found it beneficial and I hope to see you in our future webinars. Thank you again and have a nice day. AGA CAD, Building BIM Together.